can do this with my eyes closed. Still got crack, they feeling. Flow still hot like Phoenix. Shine so bright, I'm gleaming. This off top, I'm tweaking. Fresh out the rat like me. And I'm still trying to fight my demons. Cause we all gotta act like Tina. That's why I gotta ride with the Nina. Outside, it's a war going on. Made me put my hands on my head like a Macarena. They want you walking on board like Kim. Ain't give a F to you like John Cena. Putting blood on the brand new Beamer. Trying to earn they stripes like Adidas. You get cold when you ride with the heater. It'll turn you to a dog like a Keto. And exposed to a cat like a cheetah. They smoke my partner like Reef. They me lo porque o no and they know me can they must really need Jesus. They said real blood, I never seen a crypt and I believe it. It's too easy. Too, too, too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. It's too easy. Too, too, too easy. I can do this with my eyes closed. Welcome in. Welcome in. Happy Monday, everybody. Hopefully you guys had a good weekend. It was a, a great weekend for us. We had a huge day betting on uh, Sunday. MLB went 5-1. and one. Uh, Obviously on Sundays I, I post my betting card for free. On Twitter, so everyone saw that everybody got those winning plays sent to them on Twitter. Uh, and then the Masters card did great as well. Siwoo Kim battled back, got us uh, a top 40, so we cashed the Siwoo Kim and Xander top 40 parlay three-unit play. We cashed that. We cashed uh, Xander top 10, uh, plus 140, and we obviously hit Scotty Scheffler parlayed with UConn in the national championship that paid out uh, over six to one. So it was a really, really good weekend for us. Really good Sunday. Got to keep that momentum going into this week. Last week during the week was not good for me in terms of baseball. A lot of just tough breaks, couple bad picks in there as well. So we're going to try and keep this momentum from the weekend going uh, through the week now. Um, it's tax day. Hopefully <laughs> we need to win some bets tonight. I'm going to tell you that right now because, uh, yeah, these taxes, man, just kicking my ass. So we, let's try and, uh, let's try and, and win some, win some bets tonight. I think there's like an error right now with, with Twitter. Like it's not, it's not popping up on Twitter for some reason. I don't know why, but let me see. I don't know, Stephanie, what's up? But uh, anyways, great weekend. We're going to keep that momentum going into the week. So we're going to talk baseball today, and we're also going to talk NBA playoffs. We got the series. Series prices are out for playoff series. Uh, those start tomorrow. We can look ahead at some of the lines in those games. Um, I've taken one series bet thus far, which I posted in the Discord last night. Uh, so we'll give that out here on the stream. Let me see if the odds moved on that. Uh, looks like still the same. So, all right. So we'll talk about that. Um, if you guys have questions on anything, you can go ahead, ask in the chat. And uh, if there's anything else from the weekend you want to talk about, you can uh, ask about that as well. I'm trying to think. Masters was pretty standard. I mean, Scotty Scheffler is the best golfer in the world, and it's not even like remotely close. Um, where do you see NBA series lines at? On uh, FanDuel or DraftKings, if you go to NBA. Uh, DraftKings, I think it's the same, but I just I have FanDuel pulled up. You just go click on NBA and then scroll all the way over at the top. There's like props, NBA Finals, conferences, and then East Playoff Series, West Playoff Series. So you can click on those. 
And they uh, FanDuel just has Cavs, Magic, and Bucks, Pacers, and then Clippers, Mavs, Timberwolves, Suns. Obviously, the uh, the other ones will be posted after we we get through the the playing games and all that stuff. But yeah, Scotty's is the best golfer in the world. It's not close. Uh, we'll be talking golf on this week's stream on Wednesday, Harbor Town Week. I love this tournament. Uh, this is my favorite course on tour. So uh, we'll definitely be giving some golf bets out on Wednesday. But today, baseball, basketball. We'll we'll talk basketball at the end. Looking for some MLB same game parlay ideas for FanDuel. Uh, typically, I mean, I would look for games with either bad pitchers. So, for example, I think you could look at Colorado Philly today. Not that Aaron Nola's bad. Uh, but let me let me check. Let me look at this here. So, Nola's really struggled this year because of his velocity. He he had a decent start in in his last last time out. But I mean, if you look at Aaron Nola's advanced metrics this season, so we we can lead this into the MLB talk, Ryan, since you since you asked this question. But uh, if we look at Aaron Nola's stats, let's go back to to 2021. Right, he had a 4.63 ERA, but a 3.35 expected ERA. So he probably got pretty unlucky that year, right? His expected ERA was a full run uh, lower than his actual ERA. Probably dealt with with a little bit of bad luck in, in 2021, 2022, same, same situation. His ERA came down to 325, but his expected ERA was at 274, which was one of the best numbers in all baseball. So again, we saw some of that regression coming a four, six, three down to a three, two, five, but his expected ERA was another full run lower than it was the previous season. He was one of the best pitchers in baseball, still got a little bit unlucky. Then we'll look at 2023, which was last year, uh, back up to a 4.46 ERA, 3.71 expected ERA. So once again, his actual ERA was a full run higher than his expected ERA. Um, that's a three-year trend of that happening. So may maybe there's just something where, uh, for whatever reason, maybe it's the amount of home runs that he gives up. Some something's going on to where Aaron Nola, it's tough for him. Uh, to experience any sort of good luck. But the reason I'm concerned is we jumped to this year and his actual area, it's only a few starts. His actual area is 4.5. His expected area is 5.84. So now we're seeing a trend where instead of it being lower, his expected ERA is over a run higher than his actual ERA right now. That can be directly correlated to his loss in velocity. Um, if we look at his four seam fastball in 2023 he was averaging uh 92 miles per hour on his almost 93 92 7 so in 2023 he averaged about 93 miles per hour on his four seam fastball this year through his first couple starts he's throwing at 90 miles an hour so and and there were some times in his last start where he was hitting like 89 so his his velocity is way down i think that that you know, has a direct kind of correlation as to why his expected ERA is so high. If you look at the advanced numbers, uh, just nothing, nothing looks good right now for Aaron Nola. Uh, so I'm concerned. Um, obviously, on the other side of that game, Cal Quantrill is just someone we're definitely willing to to attack with bats. So I would try to find a game where the pitchers, I think, are attackable and look to stack bats or find a game where the pitches are good, you know, and and you could you can do like strikeout stuff, parlays like I'm I'm definitely fine uh, doing that, you know, alternate strikeout stuff like that. But I think both sides of Colorado Philly look good offensively. I like the over in that game. I, I haven't taken any MLB bets yet. So we're going to be going through the board here. I'm going to be posting my card after we get off here. But the over in Colorado, Philly looks good. Uh, you could look at the first five over, uh, four and a half, I think is fine. Uh, it's minus 140 on FanDuel right now. Uh, that's like the first game we'll talk about anyway. So this kind of just works out. So uh, I definitely like the over in this game. First five over looks good. I'm going to see what it is on DraftKings. So, so, sometimes DraftKings has better lines. 
for first five than than FanDuel in terms of the juice. Uh, yeah, minus one. It's it's minus one thirty on DraftKings for over four and a half first five. It's minus one forty on FanDuel. So you're saving ten cents if you're going to take it. I would look to take it on DraftKings. Definitely going to consider adding that to my card. I I definitely think Nola could give up a run or two here, and I have no concerns about Philly scoring on Cal Quantrill. So I might take the over for the full game. I might take it for the first five. Need to look into that. Uh, but that definitely sticks out. Twins and Orioles, um, you can see here, Twins are kind of seeing some line movement. Orioles open at minus 155. They're down to minus 130, despite overwhelmingly public action on the Baltimore Orioles here. The Orioles clutched up for us yesterday. They clutched up hard. We had a minus one and a half. They they took a two run lead late, and then Craig Kimbrell tried to like lose the lead, but we survived. We survived the Craig Kimbrell experience, which is one of the toughest things in sports to survive. Honestly, uh, Cole Irvin's going for Baltimore tonight. Don't love him. Uh, he has pretty bad numbers across. Okay, I, I like he's hit or miss for me. Also, pretty bad. Uh, this year, last year, I mean, just pretty middling numbers. Four five eight expected ERA. Uh, gave up an average exit velocity of ninety one. Neither of these guys are good. Twenty five percent strikeouts last year. So he's got a little bit of strikeout juice. Uh, this could be this could be another over game for me. Fifty nine percent of the bets, but eighty three percent of the money on the over nine in this game. It is uh, juiced to uh, it's minus one fifteen on Fanduel over nine over over in the first two games of the night might be the play for me here. I don't like either pitcher in that Baltimore ball uh, Minnesota game, and I'm concerned about Aaron Nola, so I like the over in that game as well. All right, moving on Texas and Detroit. We have Reese Olson against Michael Lorenzen. Uh, Reese Olson Reese Olson has a little bit of juice. Uh, he hasn't looked good through his first couple starts this year, but but last year, uh, sub four ERA, expected ERA was a, a little bit higher at four seven three. Uh, but he got a twenty five percent strikeout rate last year. He's got a little bit of swing and miss in there. Uh, looking at his pitches last year, really really good whiff percentage on his slider, uh, forty one point six percent whiff percentage on that slider last year. So that's encouraging. Uh, Dewan, what's up? I uh, was at the doctor for my youngest. Ho hopefully everything's all good. Hopefully health is all good. Dewan. Trying to see. Let's see how Texas looks against sliders here. Current and last season versus sliders. Uh, they hit it pretty well. 340 Woba for the for the entire lineup. Uh, twenty three percent strikeout rate is high, but a two hundred five ISO and a three forty WOBA. Those numbers will definitely get it done against sliders. So, I am a little bit concerned. Uh, she's good. That's great to hear. Uh, my knee is doing good, Stephanie. Thank you for asking. Three month checkup. All right, that's good. That's good to stay on top of that. I'm glad that uh, glad that she's doing good. Knee is doing much better. I, I might uh I might avoid a, a doctor's appointment here. Because it feels uh feels really good today, honestly. Uh, all right, so I'm concerned with this matchup here for Olsen. Um, relying on that slider. I mean, he he throws his slider. His slider is his most used pitch. He's thrown more sliders than any pitch this season. And he relies on it, obviously, to to get swing and misses and, and strikeouts. So the, the Rangers, they're feast feast or famine against that pitch. They they strike out a lot, but really, really powerful. Good, good numbers woba wise against sliders. So I'm I'm a little bit concerned that that would give me some hesitancy here with backing the Tigers as slight favorites. Michael Lorenzen, he's like a journeyman pitcher. Uh, he pitched for the Tigers last year actually, so they should be familiar with his stuff. Probably just to stay away for me. Uh, but I I kind of understand this this kind of attention being thrust on, on the Rangers here, but. I think this game is going to be a, a stay away for me. 
Giants and Marlins. Uh, we have Edward Cabrera against Kyle Harrison. Kyle Harrison is kind of the up-and-coming pitcher for the Giants. He has upside, but we really haven't seen it in terms of the strikeouts translate to the big leagues this year. He's their number one prospect. Uh, four seven six ERA through his first few starts. Four five two expected ERA. So that that all checks out there. Giving up a lot of hard hits. Forty six point eight percent hard hit percentage is probably not going to get it done. And decent amount of barrels. Ninety two average exit velocity. The, the problem with Cal Harrison right now is he's just not getting enough swing and miss. And because of that, they're putting the barrel on the ball. They're able to put balls in play. And that's my that's my concern with with Harrison at this moment. On the other side of that, Edward Cabrera, he kind of is what he is again, just just like an average pitcher. Um, don't don't really have a strong lean uh, in this game. Nothing really sticks out. I mean, like the money's coming in on on San Fran. The, the line's moving towards Miami. Miami is pretty undervalued. I feel like because they started off so bad. But uh, that looks like another game I'll, I'll probably just stay away from. Don't don't really like either pitching side there. Don't know. Um, I'll have to check. But don't think there's anything sticking out in terms of like a bullpen edge either. All right, let's move on. Angels and Tampa Bay. We've got Patrick Sandoval going up against Zach Eflin. Let's take a look at Zach Eflin here. Pull him up. Um, looks like he's gotten pretty unlucky to start the year. Um, his 6.35 ERA backed up by a 4.08 expected ERA, so two full runs higher. You know, you can get some noisy stuff like this in uh, in their first few starts. So that happens in baseball when it's only a couple couple games sample size. But definitely looks like he's been a little bit unlucky. He's you know, standard Zach Eflin of the past never walks, guys. That's the case this year. He's only walking 2.7% of his batters. Uh, strikeout rate is down 26% last year. He's striking out only 20% this year. I want to see. Let's take a look. Let's see if he's still getting swinging strikes. I think that that uh, could give us a little little taste as to what's going on here. So. Uh, let's see. Last year he had a, eleven percent swinging strike percentage. This year it's ten percent. So nothing, nothing crazy there. Nothing crazy there. CSW percentage, you know, four percent less, but kind of right around with his career average. So strikeouts should honestly probably come back for Eflin. It appears, and I, I like Zach Eflin. He he doesn't walk guys. And it looks like he's been pretty unlucky. Uh, there was a lot of sinkers. So let, let's take a look. How do the Angels do against sinkers? Let's take a look. Uh, decent. If we look at last year and this year, 381 Woba is really, really high. They don't strike out a lot, but low power, which, I mean, the team as a whole is low power other than, you know, Mike Trout. Really not a ton of power in the lineup. So I don't know. They they match up decently well against that. Let me let me let's pull up uh let's pull up Sandoval and see what the story is. Uh Ryan, thoughts on the same game parlay. Phillies Rockies over eight and a half, Nola under six and a half K's and Rockies first five money line. Um, don't hate that at all. I don't know if I'd do Rockies money line. Maybe maybe try and do the the spread or alt the spread to one and a half. But other than that, no, no, uh, no issues with that. I think that's definitely fine. Take take some like if you were gonna if you're gonna do a same game parlay for that game, I would take some props. So I mean, let let's just let, let me pull it up real quick for you. Okay, so Nola, what do we know about Nola? He's gonna throw uh, a lot of four seam fastballs. He's gonna throw a lot of knuckle curves. So you know, let's go over. Let's see. Let's see what the Rockies do here. Four seam fastball. Since last season, uh, Ryan McMahon, far and away the best hitter on the Rockies. 411 Woba against the pitch, uh, 227 ISO. 
Uh, 61% hard hit percentage, cr crazy numbers against four seam fastballs, uh, knuckle curve, Ryan McMahon, good, good numbers there as well. Small, smaller sample size. Cause you're going to see less of them, but 495 Woba. So maybe McMahon to get a hit or maybe McMahon two plus total bases. If you're, if you're feeling frisky, maybe you could throw that in there, you know, do, do the Rockies plus one and a half for that first five add in like a McMahon hit or something like that. But uh, looks like he far and away has the best numbers to match up with Aaron Nola. And Nola, I mean, this season, 272, Woba allowed to righties, 167 ISO against the lefties, 495 and 355. So Nola's been really, really bad against left-handed hitters this year. Obviously, that fits into McMahon as well. Charlie Blackman at the top of the lineup has uh, pretty good numbers against four-seamers and knuckle curves as well. So maybe do a Blackman hit or a McMahon hit, add that in with, with those other stuff. I think that's something along the lines of, of something you could do. But let's jump back to that Angels-Rays game. Let me pull up Patrick Sandoval. Patrick Sandoval at one point this year looked like he looked like Cy. I think we bet against him, and he looked like Cy Young. Same situation for Sandoval. 657 ERA, 408 expected ERA. Uh, strikeouts are up for him, 19% last year, 25% through his first few starts. Throwing his change up a lot, and uh, his change up's been good. His change up's been really good. Getting a 43% whiff rate on that change up. So he's been going to that, that change up. It's his second most used pitch. He's been going to that to kind of get putaways and to get strikeouts. And changeup looks really, really good. So let let's see how uh, the Rays match up here against changeups. I think that could be a, a key factor. Uh, decent numbers, Th three forty eight woba, but uh, only only fifteen point eight percent strikeouts, one twenty ISO. A Rosarena is hitting changeups very, very well. Uh, he hits lefties very well in general. Uh. Paredes, kind of the same. Ahmed Rosario, kind of the same. So kind of the crux of this Rays lineup, 3-4-5, do hit changeups well. Um, they also all bat from the right side. The Rays are going to throw an entirely right-handed lineup at Patrick Sandoval tonight. If we look at his numbers last season, 265 Woba allowed to lefties, 337 to righties. So big drop-off to right-handed hitters. This year, 233 to 377, big drop off to, to right handed hitters. So I definitely have some concerns here. Sandoval going up against an entirely right handed lineup, going up against a middle of the order that's really going to be able to hit his go to pitch well. So I have I have some some definitive concerns about Patrick Sandoval tonight. So for that reason, I definitely definitely lean in Tampa Bay here. I could see myself betting Tampa first five. I could see myself betting Tampa on the money line. Um, at min minus 164 might be a little little juicy for me. So first five might be what I stick to here. You can get them at uh, minus 128 on, on FanDuel for the first five run line. I guarantee that's like minus 120 on DK so we can get a better number there. But Tampa first five looks like uh, something I could be adding to my card. Like how they match up with that change up. So, uh, yeah, Tampa, that might get added to my card. Tampa and the Rockies Phillies over are sticking out to me right now as my my favorite bets. Yankees, Blue Jays, we have uh, Chris Bassett against uh, Luis Gill. Bassett has been, this is like close to a pick -em. Bassett's been pretty good during his time in Toronto. Um, he had a 3.60 ERA last year, struck out 22.5% uh, of batters faced, only gave up an 87.5 exit velocity, 3.04 Woba allowed. Like he, he's just a solid, he's, he's solid but unspectacular, but he can certainly get the job done. He, he's someone you're confident in handing, handing the ball to every fifth day. So pr pr pretty good pitcher here. This year, th the numbers have taken a little bit of a, a fall off. His XERA is up to six two three. Again, small sample, so we don't want to we don't want to just put all of our stock into that. But 
we we can see if we can find a reason as to, as to why that is. Uh, doesn't doesn't look like any velocity concerns here. Uh, one thing that sticks out, so he's a sinker ball pitcher. That's his most used pitch far and away. Last year, he allowed a 220 batting average with his sinker. This year, he's given up a 321 batting average with the sinker. So I think that that right there can tell us what's going on. Uh, clearly, the, these guys are hitting his sinker better. Let's see how the Yankees do against sinkers. Um, pretty good numbers. Th 350 Woba as a team. All their good hitters hit him well. Uh, Volpe, 347. Juan Soto, 441. Aaron Judge, 475. Uh, Stanton, 381. Glaber Torres, 394. So all the Yankees good hitters uh, hit sinkers pretty well. Uh, I don't typically look at BVP, but since Chris Bassett does pitch against the Yankees quite often, let's just take a look and see what they've done against him. Uh, okay, so he actually has really good numbers against the Yankees. Uh, lifetime against their current roster, 77 plate appearances, 290 expected Wobo allowed, 27% strikeout rate. Uh, Aaron Judge, lifetime, two for nine against him. Juan Soto, two for seven. Glaber Torres, one for nine. Stanton, two for four. Volpe, 0 for three. So uh, he has been good against this lineup. Even though they match up well against his pitch mix, He's been pretty good against this Yankee lineup. I have concerns just because that sinker is not as good as we've seen in the past. Um, Aaron Judge does have a 97 exit velocity against him. Glaber Torres, 94. Giancarlo Stanton, not very good. So I don't know. I don't know what to make of this, to be honest. Not really sure. Not really sure. Uh, Luis Gill, it's it kind of is what he is. He's a uh, very very boom bust. He owns a thirty uh, seven percent strikeout rate this year for Luis Gill. Strikes out a ton of batters. Problem is he also walks a ton of batters. Eighteen percent walk rate is towards the bottom of the league. It's really really bad. Uh, but he's only allowing a two twenty four expected WOBA, one ninety nine expected ERA. I mean this guy's been completely nasty he just has the walk concerns that's really the only thing holding him back at this point um three pitch mix four seamer change up slider um really really good velocity on that on that four seamer he's throwing at 90 average 97 uh, and he's getting 30 32 percent whiffs on it so really, really good fastball, really good velocity. The problem just comes down to if he's if he's not going to walk, guys, I like my chances with the Yankees here. Um, in terms of the Blue Jays lineup, they, they're not very patient, honestly, um, it looks like. I mean, George Springer, 8% walk rate is pretty average. Vlad Guerrero, 8% is pretty average. And then you have... Uh, Kavan Biggio at 12%. Everyone else is below 8%. Danny Jansen, 7. Varsho, 7. IKF, 6.5. Kier Myers, below 8. Turner's 8 on the on the nose. So, I mean, not, not a super patient team here. I got to think about this one. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to revisit this. I definitely think this could be a Yankee spot if we think that Bassett is not as good as he used to be and Luis Gill is as good as those metrics say. This could be maybe a maybe a Yankee spot. I'm I'm going to wait and see on that one. Not going to put that in the in the category yet. We'll, we'll just wait and see. Pittsburgh, New York. Uh we have Adrian Hauser going for the Mets against Martin Perez. Don't don't really like anything here. Um the Mets have kind of come on. They started off super, super cold, but they've been heating up. Uh, Pittsburgh's been good all year. They're 11 and five. They're tied for the lead in the NL Central. So I'm not really going on my way to pick on them. This is just a, a, a pass for me, I think. Top to bottom, top to bottom. Padres, Brewers, Joe Ross, and uh, Joe Musgrove going. I want to dive into Joe Ross here because I, I think this could be a spot where, where we take the Brewers. Joe Ross has a uh, pr pretty good metrics this year. Through his first few starts, he's only allowed one total barrel. 
one eight ERA backed by a two eight expected ERA. So still, still really good. Um, he throws a ton of sliders. It's his most used pitch. And uh, he gets 44% whiffs on that slider. So he has a really good slider and he throws it a ton. If we dive into San Diego here, they're okay against sliders. N nothing, nothing crazy. Um, I think this is a spot where we, we could look at Milwaukee because I, I definitely, Joe Musgrove, I used to be a big fan of, but he just hasn't been consistent um, this year. I mean, he looked pretty bad in spring training. He's come out in his first few starts. 8-4 expected ERA is towards the bottom of the league. He also throws a, a ton of sliders, but in comparison to Joe Ross, Joe Ross getting 44% whiffs on that slider, Joe Musgrove getting just 27% on his. So that's a sizable difference. Um, so yeah, I don't know. This, this could be a spot where we look to, to back the Brewers, at least for the first five. The Brewers have a pretty good bullpen though. So if you ever want to back Brewers first five, like I'm always fine to just back them for the full game because their bullpen is one of the best. I, I don't have many bullpen concerns when it comes to the Milwaukee Brewers. Uh, the line movement would indicate that the Brewers could be the good play here as well. Like I said, Padres open minus 135, and the line has flipped. Brewers are now favored. Uh, Brewers will probably be going on my card. Brewers stick out. We're going to buy into some Joe Ross tonight. White Sox Royals, uh, don't love anything here. Seth Lugo. Going up against uh, Nestrini. Nestrini, I think this is going to be his first start. The White Sox are calling him up. Looks like he's got some good strikeout stuff in his minors numbers. Uh, ERA wasn't super great at AAA, so it's just uh, an unknown. Um, I don't like to go out of my way to bet against pitchers making their first start just because you never know. Sometimes if you don't see a guy, you can struggle against him. So that game's probably a pass for me. Darius Vines against Aragetti in this Braves-Astros game is hilarious. Like, the fact that we're getting a potential NLCS matchup and it's April 15th and we have Darius Vines against Arigetti is nuts. Absolutely crazy. Uh, over under is 10 and a half, rightfully so. Both these guys are just complete unknowns at this point. There's no way I could confidently bet a side of this game right now. I, I just don't know. And the Astros, I mean, they maybe they're starting to heat up, but offensively they haven't been super good. So pass on that game for me. Ross Stripling against Sonny Gray. I mean, I, I'm not going out of my way here to, to bet on Oakland, but I, I don't really want to back St. Louis with Sonny Gray only going 75 pitches. He could run into trouble in two innings and be out of there in four. Uh, seven and a half honestly seems... Seems a little low, um, but I get it because it's in Oakland. So, I don't know. I'll, I'll pr probably stay away from that game as well. Maybe... Maybe I'll look to to take some props there. Chicago, Arizona, Ben Brown against Merrill Kelly. Merrill Kelly has been very, very good at home in his uh, time in Arizona. Let me see if I can pull up. Let me see if I can pull up his home stats. Pull up his baseball reference. All right. Uh, let's go career splits. Home or away. All right. Merrill Kelly in his career, 65 uh, starts, it looks like. Uh, maybe more. Can't tell. He's pitched for Diamondbacks for a number of years here. Uh, at home, he is allowing a 228 batting average on the road, 255. So sizable difference there. Um, he's given up more home runs on the road. He has 393 strikeouts at home compared to 304 on the road. And uh looks like a pretty even split in terms of his home versus away starts. So, yeah, he's a really, really good home pitcher. I don't like to go out of my way to bet against him at home. Mitchell, what's up? Mitchell, if you join late, go back and rewatch. I've been in my bag today on the stream. I'm diving into pitch mixes, everything. I'm giving you guys the goods today. I have been in my bag. So, uh, yeah, definitely lean Diamondbacks if you're going to take anything here. Merrill Kelly at home, 
Uh, ben Brown is not super impressive to me. Uh, you could look at Arizona first five, maybe something along those lines. Uh, ben Brown, top 10 prospect for the Cubs, but didn't look super ready for me. Uh, didn't look super ready to me for the big leagues. We've only seen him for 10 innings, but 96 exit velocity allowed, 398 expected Woba allowed, throws a ton of fastballs, and uh, he has good velo at 96 and a half. But he's given up a 399 expecting ba- uh, expected batting average on that four seamer, only getting 14 percent whiffs. His knuckle curve is his second most used pitch. He's getting 47 percent whiffs, so he's got a really good knuckle curve, and he basically relies on that to get outs because it's all of his put away percentage is on that knuckle curve. So he he's entirely dependent on getting strikeouts with that knuckle curve. Uh, so Arizona looks like a good good bet for me here. Let's see. Let's let's just see. Uh, let's go fastball. Uh, Arizona as a team against right-handed fastballs, four fourteen woba. Really really good numbers. Corbin Carroll demolishes fastballs. Christian Walker, Jock Peterson, uh, Gabby Moreno, all these guys hit fastballs really well. So it's just going to come down to if Ben Brown has that knuckle curve working or not. But uh, Arizona looks like it could be a bet for me tonight. Uh, let's take a look at the money line predictor real quick here before we finish out those last few games. See what it likes. Uh, money line predictor likes Pittsburgh, which I could see. Uh, likes San Diego, which I don't like. Likes the Cubs, which is interesting. Um, also likes Texas, which I kind of said could could be interesting. But all right, let's go back. Look at these last two games. Uh, UFC 300, I did watch, yes. That was pretty good. That Holloway fight was crazy. Absolutely crazy. That was awesome. All right, let's see here. Last couple games of the night. We've got Reds, Mariners, Nationals, Dodgers. Nationals, Dodgers, we really don't need to talk about. It's Tyler Glass now. They're minus, 370, uh, minus 375 favorites. Uh, Tyler Glass now, uh, I might put a future on him. To win Cy Young. If he stays fully healthy for the year on this Dodgers team, I think it would be hard to keep him out of the Cy Young. He's pitched to a sub two expected Woba this year. He's striking out a ton of batters. He looks healthy. He looks good. Tyler Glass now for Cy Young might be uh, added for me. So don't need to talk much about that game. Reds Mariners is, is definitely interesting. Frankie Montas against George Kirby. Montas has been. Pretty good. He was kind of an unknown coming into the season for the Reds. Just a 2-1-6 ERA this year through his um, first 16 innings. 278 expected ERA. Uh, not getting a ton of strikeouts, 19%. But overall, the numbers are pretty good. 265 expected Woba allowed. Not giving up many barrels, only 2.9%. He's only giving up two barrels total in 16 innings, so... Uh, Frankie Matas has looked pretty good. If you know anything about the Seattle Mariners this season, they've been striking out a ton against right-handed pitching. Last season, they struck out 24.8% of the time against righties. This season, it's up to 31%. 31%. I mean, they are horrible against right-handed pitching right now. On the opposite side of that, George Kirby, someone that a lot of people had high expectations coming in this season, uh, he's been getting really unlucky. 816 ERA backed by a 367 expected ERA. So we can definitely accept, uh, expect some positive regression coming the way of George Kirby soon. Not worried about him in the slightest right now at all. So yeah, this could be like an under game for me or a first five under. Obviously the total of the game is only seven. So it's kind of tough. It's kind of tough to bet on an under seven in a major league baseball game. To be honest, uh, or wait, no, what is it? Is it seven and a half? Where is this game at? It's seven. Okay, yeah. To over unders at seven. Tough to bet an under seven in a baseball game. Uh, first five over unders only three and a half. So man, I I, I guess we kind of missed out on this. Let me see on DraftKings if you can get a better number than that. Because FanDuel's giving us just no no room there. Um, seven on seven on fan, uh, seven on DraftKings as well. First five total runs. Yeah, I mean it's it's just I don't know. 
just probably just to stay away. Or if they if there's like a one run scored in the first inning or something, maybe we could look to jump in live on the total here. But I like both these pitchers. Uh, maybe, maybe we could do a, a no run first inning. Maybe could could be in the mix. Don't hate that. Uh, yeah, Mitchell knees doing good. Knees doing good. I think I'm gonna avoid a doctor's visit, which is good. Feels close close back to to full today, so feeling good. Uh, no run first inning in the in the Reds Mariners game. That might be the play. All right, if you guys join late, you can go back and rewatch the stream. Uh, really dove into some of the metrics today. Overall, for me. In terms of bets, I like that Colorado Philly over. Uh, I like that Minnesota Baltimore over. I kind of like the Brewers over the Padres. Kind of like the Diamondbacks. I like that no run first inning in the Mariners Reds. And maybe the Texas Rangers. So I haven't taken, I have not taken anything officially yet. My full card will be posted in the Discord per usual. Those are my leans on all these games. I'm going to dive in a little bit more and, and like fully decide what I want to take. But that's what I'm looking at right now. Um, I don't know. This stream went long. I was diving in. So we'll talk NBA more tomorrow since it starts. In terms of the NBA series prices, I've taken the Dallas Mavericks to beat the Los Angeles Clippers. It is even odds, minus 110 both ways. Uh, if you give me Luka Doncic at even money to win a playoff series, against a team that's similar skill level. I'm 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 taking Luca. My USD is going on Luka Doncic. So give give me Luca. Uh and I also like the Cavs. I like the magic over the Cavs. This this Cavs team just feels very similar to last year. I think they're soft. I think they're gonna let Cavs fans and me down in the playoffs. Orlando they disrespected the game by purposely losing a game to face Orlando. That's bad karma. First of all, that's bad karma. Second of all, Orlando's a good team. Third of all, Donovan Mitchell has one foot out the door in Cleveland. And four, I think the team is soft. So there's four reasons why I think we should take the Magic in this series. Uh, if you want to... You think Lakers lost tomorrow to avoid Denver versus round? I'm not sure. That's a different situation because I would want to avoid Denver too. Especially Denver owns the Los Angeles Lakers. If Denver plays LA Lakers in a playoff series, it will be a max bet on the Lakers. It will be a max bet on the Nuggets series spread minus one and a half max bet on that. The Nuggets completely own the Lakers and it's not like Mike Malone is not losing to, to the Lakers in a playoff series. So if we get Lakers Nuggets five unit max on the Nuggets, I'm telling you this right now. Um, that's different though, because I would want to avoid Denver too avoiding the Cavs trying to avoid like the Knicks or whoever to go to the magic is stupid. If anything, you should want to play some of these good teams to prove that you're good. I don't like what the Cavs did yesterday. The magic are a good team. And like I said, Donovan Mitchell is ready to leave. I have no faith in this Cavs team. So I like magic to beat the Cavs and I like Mavericks to beat the Clippers. That's my series bets right now. Tomorrow if we dude, if if we get if we get Lakers Nuggets, I mean, I'm talking this will this will be biggest bet of the year on on the Nuggets, I think, or at least biggest bet since um what was our big bets this year? I guess we put a big one on Michigan and the Natty, and I mean, we had Chiefs in the Super Bowl, but not a big one. Michigan and the Natty is probably our biggest bet this year. Nuggets series spread over the Lakers will be a five unit max, I think. So stay tuned for that. We'll talk about that more tomorrow. Uh, good luck with your wages tonight, guys. I appreciate everyone that tuned in. I'll be live same time, same place tomorrow, 3 p.m. Good luck with your wagers, and uh, I'll see everyone on Tuesday.